Uh, today's video is sponsored by Omaze. I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. The whole point of today's video, I finally pulled the trigger. <laughs> well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead. Uh, welcome back to a cool, what was foggy morning here in Southern Oklahoma. Rifle season's over. We're not deer hunting today. It's kind of sad, you know, like I absolutely 100% had such a great time with my kids the last two weeks of rifle season. Um, it's still bow season. We could still do some bow hunting. Um, I mentioned the other day about possibility of maybe finding a crossbow or something so Houston could get out there and get after Limpy Gimpy a little bit. Uh, I haven't done anything on that, but um, I don't know, maybe, maybe. But with deer season winding down, we might as well start preparing for next deer season, right? And you know, we, we feed the deer here. We, I want to do more in the future. I want to do more food plots. I, I used, well, usually I plant a couple acres in wheat and rye and oats and turnips and things for the deer. This year, it was so dry. The ground was so hard. It wasn't even really worth the effort. I have some wheat seed in my shop that I never planted, but I think what I'll probably do is take it over to the Mill Creek property and just broadcast it on the pond dam because we really need some green just to grow on the pond dam just to hold the dirt back from erosion. Should have done it two months ago, but eh, every time I had the time to get over there, it was there was just things going on. So I hadn't got that seed thrown out, but like yesterday it was 72 degrees. Today it's in the 50s. We do have some rain coming later this week. So if I can get over there and at least broadcast that seed, I think it'll come up and at least help with erosion control. control. And the deer may eat it some too. But I, uh, I need to go to town in a little bit. I got to pick Houston up from school and then run to the feed store and get some corn. I do buy corn in bulk. Um, even though we're not deer hunting right now, I still do keep a few deer feeders going. And I like to feed corn in the wintertime in the yard just to watch the deer and the squirrels and all the wildlife and stuff. So I buy bulk corn because it's much, much cheaper than buying it by the bag. So I got to run to the feed store and do that. Go pick up Houston from school. From school. Probably go get a haircut. I think we got a haircut appointment scheduled today. If I'm not mistaken, I think my wife took care of that. Um, anyways, but I think the animals want to be fed. Phoebe says she's hungry. Are you hungry, Phoebe? Hmm? And I totally expected by now to be showing you guys baby goats. We should have had baby goats by now. I don't know what the deal is. Bear. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> you want out? You were just out on the porch earlier. You're such a goober. Such a goober, man. Come on. Come out and play for a while. Earl wants to play. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Phoebe, has mom been, neg has mom been neglecting you on the treats? Hmm. Look out, girls. Look out, girls. Back up. Back up. Back up. Let's put a little here for Ralph. Ralph likes to eat by the gate. Just a little dab here, a little dab there. Don't run over me, Fallon. What's up, Ralph? You having a good day, buddy? Pepper? Why? Why must you spill everything you eat? Hmm? Because you're a pig? There's little Reba. Hey, Reba. You want to come say hi? All right. That was a good talk. You guys see the donkeys all the time on DJ's channel, but you know, 
Everybody loves a good donkey time, right? These little donkeys are cool. I like them. Let's go check on RJ. What's up there, Mr. Rufus Jr.? You're growing a lot faster than Reba is. You know that, buddy? Reba's still a tiny little thing. And look at you. Are you going to come say hi this time? You got a little green something on your bottom lip, girl. Did you know that? I don't think you care, do you? You come say hi? Hmm? Nope. Everyone else is doing good in here, though. Oh, RJ. Mom doesn't like it when you do that. You know that, right? She doesn't like it when I touch her, either. It's not just you, buddy. Okay, I'll let you eat. I'll leave you alone. So, uh, do you ducks eat a lot of hay? Or are y'all just like uh, filtering the turds? Because that's what I think. So how long are you girls going to hold out on me? We should be having babies. I see your bellies. I see your very, very large bellies, Skip. Mm-hmm. You know, Lambert, I really hate it when I hit the hit the record when I forget to hit the record button sometimes. Hey, I'm talking to you. I hate it when I forget to hit the record button. But uh yeah, girls are fed and uh bellies are growing. Isaac, I hear you over there snorting at her, but uh I got news for you. Move Lambert, now you're in the way. Um She's gonna be a mom soon. Look at the belly on her. She's not interested in you, buddy. Sorry. Um, bellies are large. Starting to get some, some udders. I mean, look at that gray doe over there. I know that's just what you guys wanna see, but um, won't be long. Won't be long, we'll have baby goats on the farm. Isaac, bro, she's pregnant. She's not interested, man. Just have some lunch. It'll make you feel better. Fellas, excuse me. I gotta feed. Are you hungry, copper? Hmm? Here. There you go. Steve, everybody loves Steve. Here you go. There you go, buddy. Don't forget about that guy. What are you... You thinking about kicking me? Jerry? I'm glad you fellas are taking care of that little baby chick. Okay, I guess you're one of the fellas too. Well, made it back from the feed store. Houston and I got our hair cut. Uh, got to get this uh, 1,400 pounds of corn unloaded. But before I do, <laughs> you got to see this. Steve, I came out here to video you on the hay pile and you jumped down braying and passing gas at the same time. What are you doing over there, buddy? Woo, that's too close, huh? What, I'm not feeding you again. I've already fed you once. Did mom bring you any treats today? Hmm? What's up, copper? So I have a couple questions for you. Would you like to have a brand new pickup and a camper to travel the country and see the sights and do you 
support veterans that put their life on the line and served our country. If you said no to either one of those, we probably can't be friends. So I'm excited to be working with Omaze to bring you an incredible opportunity at a brand new F-150 and an Airstream 20FB and support a great cause in the Bob Woodruff Family Foundation, which supports veterans. A brand new Ford F-150? I mean, come on now, come on. And an Airstream. Airstreams are like the coolest campers ever. And I just think it's great. Companies like Omaze give you a chance to win something really cool, a really nice pickup, a really nice camper, and you're helping support our country's veterans. And we all know our veterans, we, we wouldn't be where we are in this country. We wouldn't be a country if it wasn't for our veterans. And this is just one small way you can help support someone that put their life on the line for you. So if this sounds interesting to you, head on over to omaze.com slash AFH for your chance to win. The experience closes on December 31st at 1159 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So one minute before New Year's on the West Coast. <laughs> That was, that was a little scary. We're gonna carry this low to the ground and as close to our uh, hinge pins as we can because that's where you get the most lift capacity. But I'm not gonna lie, I barely got this out of that truck. That should be enough corn to last us for probably most of the rest of the winter. Buying corn in bulk is much cheaper. So let me kind of break this down. So just kind of a rough estimate, corn in uh, 50 pound bags, whether you're buying it at a local feed store or Walmart or any place that sells, you know, feed corn for deer or livestock, it's running like 12, $13 a bag, I think. I think I don't buy it in the bag very often. I buy it in bulk. And the way this figured up comes out to about $8.50 for a 50 pound equivalent. Now this is 1,400 pounds of corn, so it's gonna last a long time, <clears throat> but saves about $4 a bag if you're buying it in 50 pound bags. Now we'll say <sighs> that could have gone a lot better. Um, I've unloaded heavy loads out of my truck like that and off a trailer, usually I'll put these super sacks when they're full on my short trailer, my little lawnmower trailer that's low to the ground so the tractor doesn't have to pick it up as high. When you're talking about lift capacity of a machine, um, whatever that machine's rated for is typically, typically gonna be rated for that weight here. When you're trying to pick up a load like that and you've got part of the weight on the end of the forks like I did in part back here, 
but that's what causes the tractor to get a little tippy. Now, the front end loader had no problem lifting that amount of weight. And I do have fluid in the rear tires for ballast. So if I'd have had an implement on the back, it probably wouldn't have got as tippy. But that was pushing the limits of safety in this tractor. And that leads me to the whole point of today's video. I finally pulled the trigger. I kind of gave you guys a hint on the last video when I switched hats and had a certain logo on my hat, but I made a purchase this week, something I've dreamed of and wished for and wanted for for several years and debated and debated and debated and debated and put it off and put it off and finally decided we're just going to break down. We're going to do it. So let me just show you. Any guesses what we got here, guys? Has a key, sort of. Not really a key. Has an ignition. Let's say that. has hydraulics Ta -da! <laughs> so there it is if you've watched me for any length of time at all you know a skid steer has been on my wish list for years we rented i don't know how many uh, from GP Rent, so many Kubota skid steers we've used and tested out and tried all different sizes, all different configurations. So many different tools and implements to go on the front of a skid steer. The lift capacity alone is astronomically higher than what a tractor will do, but I'm not just buying this for the lift capacity. But let me give you a quick rundown, a quick uh, synopsis of what we bought and why we bought it. So as you can see, this is a New Holland C337. Every time I say skid steer, I want you guys to pretend I'm saying compact track loader. I know there's a difference. Skid steers have tires, compact track loaders, CTL have tracks. So this is a 74 horsepower, high flow, hydraulic high flow machine with the cab, heat and air. Um, some of you may know my brother-in-law, Dusty, has a New Holland much like this. This is uh, one size bigger. Same frame size machine, same engine size. This has a little bit higher lift capacity. But brand new, it's got five hours on it. Bought it from uh, a New Holland dealership here in Oklahoma. And that was a, uh, a hookup from my, my brother-in-law, Dusty. There's not many New Holland skid steers on YouTube. And video there's not many people talking about new holland skid steers so this machine actually came from keystone tractor keystone tractor in duncan oklahoma and you'll notice he didn't even put decals on here when david came and dropped this machine off he said hey i didn't put my company logos and stickers and all that on there i said why not and he goes well i wasn't sure if you wanted to advertise for us or not and uh anyways great company great people uh new holland made this machine right here is made in kansas um i still love my tym tractor this is not a shot at any other kind of machine this is just the machine that i went with if tym made a skid steer and believe me i've tried to convince them i would probably go with the tym skid steer but new holland i i looked at every brand out there my main thing was i wanted something that has a dealer and a shop a service center nearby. So that ruled out Bobcat, that ruled out, um, let's see, uh, Cat, it's several different ones. So locally for us, our options are Kubota, New Holland, and John Deere. I did go test drive a John Deere and was really impressed. Looked at a 74 horsepower John Deere machine, basically the comparable to this one, but it was about $18,000 more, $15,000 more or something. So, like I said, not sponsored, something I bought, but David over at Keystone Tractor is, uh, I think he sees the value in 
social media content and cut us a great deal on a great machine. Um, I've never really ran a New Holland uh, other than Dusty's. And I, haven't, I don't really have any time running it, honestly, but I know, I know from my, he bought his probably a year ago and has been 100% impressed by everything that machine will do. And there's probably not a bad skid steer, compact track loader, <laughs> on the market these days. There's so much technology that goes into these things and everybody makes a good machine. They all have um, positives and negatives. You know, one thing like Kubota, I really like the Kubota front glass windshield because it rolls up where like with the John Deere and the New Holland, it opens up like a door. And that means your boom has to be all the way up or all the way down to get in and out of the machine. Where skit with the, uh, the Kubotas, it slides up and out of the way. But this is what we went with. I can't wait to use it. There's so many implements out there that you can put on the front of a skid steer. Uh, Dusty and I work with um, precision manufacturing for the, the mini clip tree shear that I have. I'm going to switch out the couplers and put it on this and try it out on here. But Dusty from the same company got a tree puller and a big heavy duty grapple. So since he's had my welder for, you know, the better part of a year, I figure I can go borrow the tree puller, take this thing over to the Mill Creek property and uh, get rid of some cedar trees. That's the goal, hopefully pretty soon. But, uh, you know, anything from brush cutters and post hole digger, augers, the bucket, a grapple, I mean, pallet forks, so many implements. And we have GP rents 10 miles away that has every attachment you could ever want to go on the front of a skid steer. So you can go over there and rent implements fairly cheap. A rental on one of their big machines is not cheap. But uh, if you're just renting the implement, it's not bad at all. So. So this is just bought for personal use for our farm and our other property and stuff. And, and I've told you guys over and over and over, I love property maintenance and maintaining my property and making it better and making it better for the wildlife and growing bigger deer, bigger bucks for my family and my kids to hunt. And uh, this will absolutely aid in that tremendously. So we're gonna slide up in the cab. It's got two joysticks, no foot controls. Uh, it does have a heated seat, air ride seat. I mean, we're, we're a little bit a little bit bougie, but that's okay. Now every color, every brand of skid steer is a little bit different configuration, works a little bit differently. New Holland, um, I feel like their cab is plenty spacious, a lot of room. I'm 6'3 and have plenty of room in here, but it's no, it's not gonna be anywhere near like a tractor cab. So once we're inside here, two joysticks, the joystick on the right controls your boom. So up, down, tilt, and your joystick on the left drives the machine forward, backward, turn left, turn right. Um, they do have a big digital L LCD monitor that has all the information, has a backup camera, radio. Let's fire it up real quick. She purrs. So there are some things that's gonna take a little getting used to having that style of front door. If you raise that boom up just a few inches, then you're no longer able to open the door and exit. There are emergency exits to get that glass out and an emergency exit to get the back glass out. But like I said, it will take a little getting used to for sure. Now, like I said, this is the first skid steer, compact track loader that I've ever actually owned. I've ran, operated, quite a few different machines, but I can't wait to put this thing to work, see what all I can do, put it through its paces. And like I said, I'm not gonna say it was a reason for the purchase, but I noticed as I was searching uh, content, video content online, there really weren't a lot of creators running New Holland skid steers. You see quite a few Kubota, John Deere, um, a few other things, but uh, there's not a lot of content out there about New Holland and from everybody I've talked to, they're great machines, it runs great and uh, Dusty absolutely loves his and the guys over at Keystone Tractor, like, I mean, they're salesmen, don't get me wrong, I understand, but they were willing to work with me and they're willing to understand what we do and why we do it and that there may be some future potential to work with them and, and even New Holland and, you know, 
on, on content and creating content for them and helping them out. And it's, I see it as a partnership. They're not paying me. I didn't get this machine for free. I, I bought it. So it, uh, it's mine and nobody can take it away. Um, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm happy. Can't wait to put it to work. Can't wait to get it over to Mill Creek property and get to work over there, building some more trails, working on food plots, getting rid of some of those stupid, disastrous cedar trees. They're juniper. Some of you guys get on to me for calling them cedar trees. They're Eastern red cedar, but they're a small juniper that just takes over Oklahoma and many other states. But yeah, there it is. That, I finally pulled the trigger, finally broke down, bought the skid steer that I've been hum hawing around for years. And like I said, can't wait to get uh, to put it to use and see what all it'll do. Do some reviews, tell you what I like, tell you what I don't like, and uh, learn, learn how to use the thing. It's very high tech piece of machinery right there. And I think if, as long as we take care of it, it'll be a great investment for us because the way equipment prices are and the way equipment is, we're not gonna put a lot of hours on it. We're not a construction company. We'll take care of it, keep it in good shape, keep it well maintained. Five, six, seven years from now, this thing will still be worth probably close to what I paid for it. And uh, the way I see that is that is a good savings account, a good place to invest my money into a tool that's gonna to allow me to get a lot of work done around here. And then down the road, if we decide to sell it, we can get our money back out of it. As long as we take care of it, keep it well maintained. Ah, it's pretty though, isn't it? Isn't it, it it's just pretty. Like, mm, I'm that guy. <laughs> How, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm excited. Anyways, guys, huge thank you to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check the link in the description box down below. Um, huge thank you to Omaze. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day, and as always, we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.